And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Nocturne Nightfall. This is a deck that, um, you know, it's just, it's just normal Diana Nocturne Nightfall aggro. Um, I like calling it Nocturne Nightfall just for the alliteration and, and you don't see that many Nocturne decks running around. Um, but it's the same list that we've used for the last couple of months with this deck. It's one that I, I still think is a very good quality deck and one that you just don't see very much anymore. It used to be pretty popular, but now basically everybody's playing Zoe as far as Targon aggressive decks go. But I still, I like all this this Nightfall stuff. I think it's an, an underrated deck um, and just deck style. Um, it's tricky to play. This is That's the thing about this deck. It's, it's very tricky to play. It's not easy to play whenever... Um, your main your main keyword in this deck, of course, is Nightfall, which means that you get the bonus if it's not the first card you play in a round. So you really have to map out your turns each turn of like what are you going to play first, and then after that, what are you going to play for your to be able to get your Nightfall bonuses. And that that can really uh, be be tricky to play, and so it's it's a it's a tough one to sequence. Um, but you you do get some amazing attacks in here. If you can get like a, if you attack with five Nightfall allies, you level up your Nocturne and give everything fearsome, which makes it very difficult to block. You have big Overwhelm with Crescent Guardian. You have really cheap fearsome with like Onlooker. You can get some really great attacks. You have some Elusive with Shadestalker. You get some really great attacks in here. You have Doom Beast that can drain them down. Lots of great cards in here, but it's not an easy one to play. But uh, we'll get to it. Let's get to it. We're so far we're we're doing good on our rank up Sunday stream. We are. Uh, three and two and three and two. We'll take winning records all day long. And so we'll see if we can get another one here with Nocturne Nightfall. All right, playing against another deck that goes wide, a deck that loves to attack and not really block. Okay, we're going to send Doom Beast back. And I'm not sure about Unspeakable Horror. I'm going to send that back as well. We'll keep these two. This is tough to figure out what to do. Oh, Unspeakable Horror could have taken that thing down. Alright, I think I'm going to go... Just I think I'm going to play these two one-drops here on turn two. Hit him for four with the Onlooker. Now we got some 2-1 blockers. No, not Grand Plaza. Oh, I, sh I shouldn't pass here. Okay, well, they played that thing. I was going to say I shouldn't waste a mana. That's what I was going to say. Four mana this next turn. So I could go Dust, Shade Stalker, Shade Stalker. Um, I think I'm actually going to go Dustbringer, Crescent Guardian instead. This would put the Lucian down to one health if they block one of these, which is good for Unspeakable Horror. Not gonna be good. Burn away the shadows. Hmm. 
Yeah, and that's game. Because then these, these things just get to challenge, and you know, they'll bring back the sharks. This is... Uh, it's game there. Yeah, Grand Plaza, pretty balanced. Pretty fair and balanced. Right, so like... Okay, so whenever... So somebody said that I should have saved my Unspeakable Horror so that I could have killed Lucian, the one that I cast. But whenever we cast it, we didn't know that we were drawing a second. Like, there's only three uns Unspeakable Horrors in the entire deck. So that's just not a very good chance that we're drawing one of the other two. And then... That, and then we also just didn't know that they had Lucian at the time, either. Um, if if I would have known that I would have drawn one of my other two Unspeakable Horrors and that they would be playing a Lucian, then, yeah, I would have, you know, would have definitely wanted to keep it. But it's just the ch chances of, like, both those things happening aren't, like, they weren't great chances. I'm going to just mulligan these. Okay. Those are all those cards are kind of at like the top of our curve. They're a little awkward to play. So now we got turn one Solari Soldier. Maybe playing the goat on two, maybe not. Probably, probably playing the goat on two. Punish transgressions. Um, the totem thing. Oh, like the the Grand Plaza that they had, like the thing that they played. There are, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the the Grand Plaza, yeah, there, yeah. So that basically, so that's yeah, that's a newer card type called a landmark. So kind of like an enchantment kind of thing. It does it does take up one of the six spots that you have across the board. There are there are spells that do interact with them, and there are cards. Basically, each region has like one or two uh, different cards that do interact with those landmarks. Um, but my deck doesn't have any, so I I don't have a single card that can interact with them in my deck. I thought you'd never ask. So, but there there are in the you know in the game, of course there are, but just not nothing in my deck. I don't miss. So I can triple unspeakable horror this, Ezreal, and kill it. But then they could just play like a troll chant, and then I don't kill it. Yeah, Shadow Isles has, there's the five mana card. It's basically, it's five mana, you, you sacrifice a unit, and then you can kill any unit or landmark. There's that one. Crumble. Yeah, crumble. There's sunk cost. There's scorched earth, sunk cost. Um. All right, I think I'm just going to be going for the, the double unspeakable horror to try to kill this Ezreal. Or do I want to go Crescent Guardian? Maybe I'll go Crescent Guardian. Winter take you. Wow. Wow. That was the perfect play against my hand. Perfect play. Of you know, not play it here, wait for me to play Crescent Guardian, then play it. It's not bragging if you could back it up. No mercy for heretics. So the sword the soldier is just a two two. I know I could 
I could unspeakable horror the ice veil archer and keep the soldier alive but it's just a 2-2 two -two. It's not going to be an easy one to win from here, but we'll see. Witness perfection, meatbags. I appreciate that. Oh, if mushrooms could talk. That's our first one for Nocturne. Wanted to make this three power so it wasn't just like real easy for them to attack with these kind of cards. Yeah, mushrooms could talk, they'd probably say, yeah, please don't eat me. Can you improve perfection? drawn all these cards but we still haven't drawn a champion yet you know like this would be a you know great time to have nocturne you know or or diana you know just either of our, our champions are both very good all right so i'm gonna be playing this crescent guardian i guess right now i just don't have very many puff caps so maybe i need to be drawing like if, I, if i'm gonna play stalking shadows i guess i probably need to do it now before we gain all those puff caps um but i also don't have to play stalking shadows I think I think we should. Okay, that could be useful. I think I can't really play it this turn because I played the stalking shadows. So now Nocturne's leveled up. Excuse you. I, uh, so ordinary. So I'm gonna probably fading memories these these doom boot these doom beasts. <clears throat> but I'll still I'll have pill cascade if we need it. Man, so much stuff hap happens with each one of these mushroom clouds. I'm 
a meddler, not a meddler. So now I have 39 puff caps. Okay, so this here puts me down to nine. Okay, gotta kill that thing. I don't have to cast the other one yet. Let's get eight. Because I could, I don't need to play the other. Let you know, I just don't need to give them the information about the other fading memories yet. So we deal two damage to them, put them down to nine with the overwhelm right here. Do they disconnect? It's looking like they disconnected. They forced us to choose death or the blade. Well, this was a really good close game, but it's still it's not over right now, right? They could just they could reconnect and and do some cool stuff, you know. Looks like after that that pill cascade, then they just they just quit. I don't know if they That'd be a weird time for like the con the computer to or internet to bug out, but maybe they just weren't happy about that pill cascade. I don't know. Ooh, this is one where fearsome could be very important for us. And sp speaking of fearsome, both fearsome and elusives um, are both good here. The thing is, I don't you know like we don't have anything to turn on nightfall with this hand. Let's go with the goat. Oh, you're all so cute. Our predictions are up. Thank you, Gucci. Okay, a gem can do a good job of turning on so much about stars, Nightfall. Well, it's a long story. So that's going to be five. Darkness hides in my path. You leave me no choice. Live with her. Oh right, that thing gets healed, it gets turns into a two five. I know I could go like double onlooker and everything here, but I want to just try this first. All right, cool. So we're at two out of four for Diana. I will find the goodness in you, River King. Who only provides temporary sustenance, child? <laughs> Of plenty. You had your chance to walk away. So my best play this turn is going soldier into Doom Beast. 
But then how am I turning on Nightfall next turn for Diana? I guess I actually don't need to turn on Nightfall for Diana next turn, do I? Raise your weapon, Sunwood. I guess I don't have to. Be no mercy for heretics. I use Pill Cascade to give Diana Challenger and everything next turn. Nocturne, Nocturne, Nocturne. The moon is our queen, the night, her kingdom! Because Diana will get the bonus like whenever you just play another Nightfall. It'll still get the bonus. So just playing like this Doom Beast will give so what's Diana the bonus. I need time for this you know. I will be heard. I get Shade Stalker back. Shade Stalker will just be a two three. This Tom doesn't really block anything. I could see challenging the Soraka Come, a new phase instead of Tom. Face your heretic. Tom doesn't really block anything anyway. This is okay, so this puts them to one. And then I have all this stuff. I, I, so they kind of need like Hush. Right, like I could go Pale Cascade over here, and if they have Hush, they stay alive. I guess I just do it though. Yeah, let's just force them to have it. Because it still gives the plus two here, but then um, I have the Diana get the seven there. So if they have like Guiding Touch for their life total to stay alive, and then Hush like my Diana, oh, but then that thing's not staying alive. Yeah, so it was Hush, but but still, you know, so I trade Pill Cascade for Hush, and now we kill Soraka. Okay, well, they had another Soraka. Yeah, and they could have National Protection, because they would die if they did. The Star Child, I'll clear a path for you. Good to see you too, Vin. Night flowers upon my blade. The promise of a new moon upon you, Bloom Tender. I'll protect you. Bloom and fade with the morning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We can make two things not be able to block this round. So this should be game. Yeah, and game before that. Alright, there we go. We speak, and they will hear us. Nocturne Nightfall, two and one. Um Yeah, Mephistopheles asks, how good do you think Aphelios will be? You know, it's it's hard to tell before you see the cards in action, of course. But just from reading the card and everything, it looks very good. It's in the best region, Targon, and it gives you a choice between five cards. Like it looks, it looks to be like the better Riven, basically. Um, you get the choice between five cards, which means that you're always going to be choosing something, uh, something the exactly what you want for whatever scenario you have. So keeping unspeakable horror for Zoe, and then Pale Cascade and Stalking Shadows. Basically, all three of those spells are just very good quality spells, and I just want to keep them all. The Doom Beast is great later on in the game. It's not something we need the first, you know, five, five turns or so. So we're able to mulligan that fairly easily. I 
could see them wanting to like hush and then block. I kind of think I'm if they pass, I pass. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Cuz they have they had pay, they had pill cascade mana. I did not Mystical have pill cascade mana. Requires concentration. Oh. I really wish I could. I really wish I could have Nightfall turned on for that, is what I wanted to say. We were peaceful once. Celestial power. Hide no longer. We will resist. I would have gone unspeakable horror to start with. They would have, they did have the pill cascade. So am I going to let them play the only way for me to like pass priority to them and have Nocturne available for available for Lee Sin is casting a one mana spell, so it's either casting the dust or the fading memories. That's just really hard to do. I mean, I could cast Dust and see if they misplay and see if they play Lee Sin. It's just very unlikely. Zenith Blade over there. Really? Alright, so that probably means no Lee Sin. Spirit gives to those who listen. Silver light and shroud us. I'm most likely going to be using the fading memories on the Lunari Priestess and invoking again. That's going to be the, the likely outcome there. I don't want to give them like a... a yeah, so... Okay, so it does look like they have... At least that they were representing Nopify. Looked like that was that's what they were representing at least whether they have it or not I don't know. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. Okay, so Nocturne's at zero still. So this is going to be one, two. This is only three. Pleasure to see you, Master. I guess they just drew that Lee Sin. Man, life was better whenever they didn't have Lee Sin. Life was a lot better. So now we're at two. So they do have the Nopify like they're playing. At least it, they're casting the Nopify right now. Okay. No Nopify. That's good. Now I need to have the Fading Memories into the Priestess. Find a... Um, find like an Obliterate card for me. 
I guess I guess the game's over, isn't it? Yeah. How many spells they've cast? Yeah, this game's over. All they have to do is just put it, just put the gems on the lease in and you win. They're still gonna be able to do that. Still put 14 there. Okay. As the dragon wins. Well, they top decked the lease in right, you know, right at the perfect time last turn. Because if it was like this turn, you know, maybe we find an obliterate card. I guess maybe that wouldn't matter. But yeah, I guess they probably wouldn't have had the mana. They would top deck it this turn. So last turn was the correct turn to draw it. No, we don't play Vengeance. Okay, so you think that Lee should have less spells to level up, but he has to see the spells being played to level up? So you don't just get to play a whole bunch of spells and then play a leveled up Lee Sin um, later on in the game? So how many spells would Lee Sin have... What would you make Lee Sin see? Would it be so you know, make you know, make it like Tarek leveling up? How uh, Tarek has to has to see them. Their scent travels on the night air. Find your own light within the darkness. Yours is a light I cherish. I don't... Moon sister. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, like, that's possible. Yeah, I'm not, not opposed to that. Yeah, creative cards don't... They don't have a, a keyword right now. But there are... Um... There are interactions with them, right? You know, like, yeah, Basilisk Bot deals with created cards. Like, all the, all those Augment have created, you know, they care about created cards, but the created cards don't have, like, a, a specific card type, like, token or anything. They don't have a card type. Just a little something I like to call fun. They do always on the left, you can always tell that something's created because it, it always says, you know, it doesn't say it on the card, but it always says like on the side if something created it. I mean, going with like the Taric way of... Um, for Lee, Lee Sin, you know, the Taric way of leveling up, wouldn't necessarily kill Lee Sin. It would need to be, you know, balanced again, but... And I'm not saying that it necessarily has to be, it's just an, it's an interesting thought. Something to think about. Thank you, Red Fortune. Thanks for boosting the stream. Sun is light. Where have those relics gone? <laughs> Mother Moon veiled me. We were peaceful once. For truth. Back heretic. I need more of my two mana spells. The the throwing throwing away that uh, first the unspeakable horror and not getting any kind of bonus from it is really hurting me. I need more of those two mana spells. I guess I should have played Dustbringer. Argon's history is 
in each stone and star. Know your path. No, we missed. Should have taken the warrior. Forgive me. Tread carefully. You leave me no recourse. All right, looks like we're just going to get out invoked. Okay, there we go. The, t the two mana spells. That's what we need. We're we're pretty half and half. We have 22 Targon cards, 18 Shadow Isles cards. So we do have more Targon than Shadow Isles. Uh, but it's, it's pretty close. Temperamental as moonlight. Obviously, using my fading memories looks terrible now, right? Like I could have, I could have just gotten Eclipse Dragon. That looks, yeah. So obviously, that that play that I just did of take the, um, you know, fading memories. That yeah, the fading memories looks terrible right now. I really need a fading memories out of Eclipse Dragon for sure. You cannot hold us down. Brothers, whatever, we will be free. And four stitching no. Four stitching onlookers probably can't get there. Uh Harry? Hello? Harif? Harif? Maybe? Hello and welcome to the channel. And uh Il Conti also stopping by saying hi. Argon's history is in each stone and star. It was my heart that led me here. It tricks the waves, it chases the messenger. <laughs> Basically, just yeah, made it so they didn't get any free blocks. Besides, besides the Eclipse Dragon, like the Traveler doesn't get a free block anywhere. If only I had the Fading Memories Eclipse Dragon, like that could have made a big difference. Alright, so our first losing record today, unfortunately, with the Nocturne at Nightfall. Um, really what, what we did, like, really what the problem was here in these games, I think, was... Well, one, one I made I made two decisions there, that game, that, that last game that cost me was, like, the, you know, the unspeakable horror decision of not getting the extra Nightfall, and then that fading memory decision of using it a turn too early. But really, like, a, a big problem there is we did a terrible job of drawing our champions, right? We played, what, like, two Dianas and one Nocturne in five games, I think? I think that's it. <laughs> like, our, our champions are, you know, like, they're they're the champions. They're the best cards in our deck. And, man, we just didn't, you know, I just never played them. Um, I think we played three total champions in five games. And I that's that was, like, the, the weakness of our deck. So our deck looked like it didn't have very good... Uh, ways to finish the games because we just didn't have our champions um and so 
that was yeah i think that was like the big problem with our deck there just couldn't uh, couldn't have the firepower to finish the games um i'm still not exactly like you know we got cygnus in here and cygnus is just fine um you know with with that uh, you know getting the elusive and finishing games out you know it could be eclipse dragon and it could be evershade stalker those are like two other options for the one of we still have we're still going with the cygnus um if we kind of think about like that last turn that last game you know a cygnus could have maybe um given us some good elusive but those are other options eclipse dragon of course uh much more powerful as far as games that go long cygnus you try to just um cheese out a game with that but yeah that's what it that's what it looked like was just we didn't have a good job we didn't do a good job of finishing games um and that's a lot of that's on the on the champions that's the that's the job of the champions finish of the games especially nocturne and i think i i think i drew one nocturne in the five games i think i i had one nocturne in an opening hand i mulliganed which i regretted mulliganing that um from especially how the game played out and then i think i drew one other nocturne total and that's the name of our deck, Nocturne Nightfall. So that's not going to get it done. You know, imagine imagine playing like, you know, like Lee Sin Zoe and you have like one Lee Sin in five games. You know, like your deck's not going to look that good. <laughs> you know, we had one Nocturne. All right. But anyway, um, yeah, so that's 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 why we struggled. So I ended up going two and three. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd really appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching. That was some Nocturne Nightfall, and I will see you for the next video.